Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 515. Topic today is he said she heard he no. She said he heard she felt he reacted. Or it goes the other way. <laughs> I explain a lot more when I jump into this. Before I do that, I'd weird title. I'll get to explain in a moment what it is. Um, before I do that, let me choose myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women attract, create, and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day for the last almost couple of years, due to inspired events in the world, I started doing these talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And so today we're at episode 515, which is way up there. Um, excuse me. Itchy nose. And the topic today is going to sound weird, but it can explain as I go along and you might get a lot of resonance because this is something we all deal with in relationships, which is basically not only miscommunication, but misunderstanding. And that's a deeper part, and I'm going to get to that. So let me start with the title again, which is, if I remember correctly, <laughs> she said he heard she felt he reacted. Or he said she heard he felt she reacted because it does go both ways. So I want to make sure it's transparent to you right up front. I didn't have enough room in my title to do both of those, but you got the point. So let me explain what I mean. Um, there's a there's a I want to say a big misunderstanding. There's a part of the world, part of the challenge of relationships is what you communicate. The other person in the relationship may or may not receive the way you communicated it. See, the thing about it is, what you said they may hear the words, but what you intended. They might understand. And same way, was they may, say, they may say something to you that you didn't hear or understand or communicate. Now, I'm going to avoid texting conversations for now because it's not about verbally, because if we get this one sorted out, then we've got a whole other level, which is text communication, which is so much less than that. Hi, Grisel. Good morning from afar. Where are, where, are you, where are you calling in? Where are you watching me from? You say afar, I'm wondering where that is. Um, and by the way, this is a Facebook Live in case you're watching this on YouTube. I do this on Facebook Live first, then put them onto YouTube later, so any comments I'm responding to, you won't see because you have to watch Facebook Live to see them. Um, I'll explain the way you find those at the end of the broadcast. So, for many people, it's very hard for us to read each other's minds, or each other's hearts for that matter. So, this may be kind of a surprise to you. Certainly, it might not be unfamiliar, because you may have experienced this yourself, I know I have where communications I've had with other people, not even in relationship, but in communication period, which is really what this is about, are based upon, I should say, are interrupted by this cross communication because we have our own um, filtration system, <laughs> to put it simply. We filter through information based on what we've experienced. And we filter in what people um, say based on our own experiences, which means that what they say may not be received and listened to and understood quite the same way. And this is the thing where I want to talk about how the, one, the nuance, but secondly, the sort of counter 10 principle, the idea about like getting off of the reactivity wagon, because the reason the title is the way it is, is what's been said isn't necessarily what's been heard. And then correspondingly, because what was heard isn't what was, what the person heard doesn't get responded to the same way, the person who said it the first thing goes, hang on, it doesn't feel right because what they're getting back from the, first, the second person doesn't match and then the other person gets upset and it blows up. So if you've been in any relationships where you've had upsets over what seems like pointless words or strange things, this is why. And the reason being is because we have certain um, historical filters. And I say historical for a reason. There was a communication, I was talking, actually a post somebody did earlier today, which I already responded to and I appreciate what she said, was that things have changed where for example, and this is talking about relationship between men and women in this context, her point, but I want, this is an illustration of the point, so bear with me if I can paraphrase what she said. So what um, she was saying is that women, some I'm going to say it another way. Sometimes, oh, Delhi, India, wow. Yeah, it's been a while since you've seen me, Grissel. Nice to have you on my broadcast. Thank you for being here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, if I remember the, what she said and paraphrase it exact more effectively so you get my point, is that women don't respond to men the same way. Meaning that some women may respond to a man who, say, surprises them with excitement and, and, uh, and titillation if he surprises her. Some women 
would react to a man who surprised them with, with a downright fear and panic because of their upbringing. So their history plays into this. So I'm using that as an extreme example, but I want to make sure you get this point that we will respond to the world and the people around us based upon a lot of how we were raised. So if, again, I talked about this a couple of days ago about how relationships can be based on arguing or not arguing based upon your upbringing. Um, much of what I didn't say it that way, but that's the way I mean it. You know, I was raised in an environment where arguments weren't part of the relation, weren't part of the paradigm in their family. So as an adult, arguments weren't effective communication for me to listen to. So when people yelled or got upset, I would shut down or close off because I didn't have the capacity and the understanding that there might be some valid communication in there. Because there was no, I had no understanding of it, no, no um, comfort with them, to be honest, because I wasn't raised with that. Other people, maybe in Italian families, not to, not to um, uh, archetype or to, no, not to um, project onto those families, but there are, say, very vocal families where yelling happens all the time. So when things are not yelled, they don't necessarily understand the communication. So I want to make sure you get the point that communication is extremely um, multifaceted. So when you say something to somebody, they may not understand what you're saying because not only are you not clear in your communication perhaps, but secondly, they might not receive it the way you've sent it because they have their own filtration system as I mentioned. Not filters, but filtration system. It's, that, it's deeper than filters, if you get my point. So the challenge we have is how do we respond? Because that's the piece in the second part of my title I was explaining. And this is, the, again, true for relationships, but any communication, business relationships, it could be social relationships, family dynamics, in friends or even in your spiritual community. When one person, when person A speaks to person B, person B's filtration system will interpret what person A said perhaps differently than what person A intended to be said in the first place. I think that makes sense. A and B, that's easy to generate. Because again, this is not masculine, feminine, or male, female um, defined. This is any relationship. And the truth is that we have a lot to learn about how to communicate with each other, period. And this is, I'm talking about the same language here, not to matter across other countries, since Grisel was mentioning she was in India. So my point of this, my intention with this, is to have you realize that when you're in communication with other people, they may not be hearing you the way you're expressing. And you may not be hearing them the way that they're expressing. Which brings up the question is, how do you fix that? Well, not so much fix, but how do you transform? How do you elevate the conversation? Here's the thing. Because we carry around so much um, invisible baggage with the words that we share with people, it makes sense that it'd be smart for us as listeners to presume that's coming through anyway. So the first thing you can do is to say to the person who's talking to you, again, maybe your relationship partner, maybe a social connection, maybe a family dynamic, say back to them, I, what I think you, I heard you say was this, is that accurate? Now, it may be silly, I don't want to say like, okay, we're going to go to the store and get some groceries. That may be a communication you can accept as is. But if you're dealing with family dynamics or feelings of health or personal stuff that's more self-centric, it can be important to qualify and clarify what was said with what you heard so you can be on the same page. That's the first step. The second thing is please don't react based on what you think they said because you don't know what they said is accurate. You don't know if you heard it accurately. This is a nuanced thing, I know, but I want to show you the layers of this. So listening clearly means also being willing to ask questions. And yes, you can listen more clearly than you normally do because the thing is we all have our baggage from the past that is the filtration system we listen through. But if we do the work to listen clearly, I did a two year program of learning, I do this, I'm not saying you should do that, but it helps and I still have mistakes. So I'm saying that you can do this in the moment, which is when you listen to somebody, do your best to stop thinking about anything else. Do your best to listen as a clear um, vessel that the words come into. So you can hear them with their meaning accurately. Because it's possible to do so if you're willing to be present enough and open enough to hear what they're saying with everything that goes with it. Because the thing is, as a coach, one of my, one of my skills, one of my requirements is when a client tells me something, I have to listen at more levels than just one. I can listen to what they say, but nine times out of ten, that is not exactly what they're talking about. It's the feeling underneath it. I can feel, I can resonate with what they're expressing underneath the radar sort of thing, which is where my response and questions go to. It's like, you know, when you said this, I felt this. Is that accurate? Again, ask questions. Don't presume. This is another part, by the way. When somebody says something to you, don't presume what you heard is accurate. So asking questions, intelligent ones, caring ones, and self um, 
reflective ones will absolutely open up the communication to be more effective. So rather than saying, you said this, I don't think it was accurate, that's not the way to do it. But say, when you said this, I believe it's what you said, is that accurate? Is there a different way of doing it? So shifting the energetic from them to you so you can actually be clear in your listening can transform every single communication you have. So this is big stuff, by the way. Frankly, we could probably change the world political stage if we had better communication. But anyway, that's another, that's, another, that's another conversation. So my point about this simply is that when you're listening to somebody else, be really, really clear that what you're hearing may not be exactly what you think you're hearing. It's possible, just possible, that what they're telling you is something other than what they're saying. And if you're willing to do the work to listen, to ask questions and not assume, and to actually invite deeper connection, you can transform your communication. Now, if you're in a relationship, this opens up more space for intimacy. Yes, intimacy. Nothing to do with sex, intimacy. Because you're being open enough to become that close where you can actually hear the other person's thoughts and feelings and experiences in one communication. This is, this, is, this is deeper level communication than most people are willing to do. So my invitation to you is if you're in a relationship and even with those you're intimate with on other levels, be willing to ask the questions of their communication so you can actually get clear of what they're saying so you can really receive what they're saying in an effective way. This is like a masterclass in, in a way because for most people there's nothing like this out there. People don't understand this. But the truth is we have the ability and option by simply being present. Again, present, opening, silencing the other voices and distractions and listening clearly and then asking questions about what you were, what you were told. Those four things alone will transform every single communication in your life. It probably will eliminate a lot of the facts you may be having, arguments, upsets, separation, discords. All those things may go away if you actually have this sort of communication. This is advanced stuff. Again, masterclass. If you want to go deeper with this, this is my work in my coaching because I actually practice this with my clients because this is the only way we can get through some of this stuff is we're willing to listen outside of the framework of the word spoken. I mentioned at the beginning about texting. This is why texting sucks for anything other than logistics. <laughs> so my, um, I've said before many times in communication, when you're in a relationship, yes, indeed, definitely challenging across cultures too. So thank you for that, Grisel, I appreciate it. Um, so texting, I have a pet peeve with this, and, I, and I'm, I'm guilty of it too. But texting or writing you know, in, um, messenger, messenger apps or using email even can be hard to communicate what you're feeling when it's not something you can express fully. I talked about this uh, a couple of days ago about the, the amount of communication comes through our words only, how limiting it is. This is another one of those points that when you're really listening to somebody, you're feeling who they are as well as what they're saying. And this is the deep work, which is almost impossible to do through a text. So I highly recommend if you want to talk to somebody about something other than logistics or shopping list or what time to meet, make it a phone call because then you can listen more clearly, hear their voice, feel into who they are. If you do it face to face, even better than that because you get to see them and experience them on another level too. If you want to raise the level of communications, this is how you do it. And this is only the starting point. I really feel this is something that can change the world, in your world, especially your own relationships, your own culture, your own experiences by doing this. So my invitation to you is reach out to me. I'll actually put a link to my discovery session so we can talk if you want to go deeper. But this is something you can practice on your own. You're giving you four steps, um, plus some reminders about taking text, taking messages out of text into verbal communication by phone or in person. Reserve texting for logistics. Make it verbal communication or video or face-to-face -face if you can because that raises the quality of communication. It also makes you more open to hearing what they're saying in a more, different, in a more powerful level, and then they'll also hear you. This is also both ways. So you might also want to do this. If you're the one speaking, just to flip the coin for a second, and you're not sure the other person heard you, ask them, could you please repeat back what I said, or best you can, so I'll make sure you heard what I said. This is the other side of the conversation, by the way. It's, it's one thing to say, okay, you're gonna take responsibility for hearing what they said, you can also take responsibility to make sure they hear what you, you, they hear what you said. This is advanced stuff too. This was part of my master's program, so it was a master class. Is to check what you heard, sorry, check what you said was heard by the other person. So again, intimate relationship or any relationship, you can use these skills as listening and as speaking to really up-level the quality of communication that actually lands more effectively. And it may feel tedious in the beginning. 
if you do that for everything you say, it's going to be real pain. But as I mentioned before, if it's just about logistics, it's like, you know, you're just going to go to the grocery store. You may not need to qualify and exactly say, did I hear you say what I heard you say? No. But when it's emotional content, if it's upset based or if it's dealing with issues, challenges, personal experiences, anything like that, it's always good to qualify and check out what you heard and also have them check out and check out with them that they heard what you said. Both ways works. This is a taste of what's available. And you can probably play with this for a while. It can change your life, all your relationships. So I think I've made my point clear enough. So both way of communication, take the space, listen, qualify, verify, and then respond accordingly. If you do this, you might just have your relationship be saved from who knows what. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here. This is my daily Facebook Live, just in case you're wondering. Every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, I do this. Um, it's a informational, inspirational, and instructional teaching, ideally. This one, hopefully, is all three. And I trust you get value from this. If you have questions, comments about that, please put them in the comments below. I will respond when I sign off. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can do the same thing there, and I'll give you the link so you can find it. Again, I put the link to my discovery session in the comments, so you can sign up for a consult if you wish. So this is my daily Facebook Live on Facebook, my personal page that goes onto my business page on, on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. And then all my social media is my name, Barry Selby. So on YouTube, my channel is Barry Selby. And the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. You find all my broadcasts there. You're welcome, Bizarre. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. Um, so YouTube channel, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. Also, my podcast is slowly getting filled up, which is also Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. Subscribe there, and you can also go in and uh, subscribe sorry, subscribe and download my audios, which are basically these in audio format without the video. So you can listen to them when you're driving, when you're cycling, when you're exercising, or doing other things where you can't focus on the screen. Because please, look where you're going. <laughs> Hope it's been a value to you. It's not an easy topic to play with, but it can change your life if you're willing to take a couple of seconds to just listen more deeply than you've been doing. This will change your life. Appreciate you watching. Thanks for being with me. I will see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of yourselves and listen more effectively than you have before. It will just about change your life. Bye.